All right. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Thanks for being part of the program. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline if you'd like to uh, be part of the program. All right. We're going to jump gears, talk a little bit about what's going on in Baton Rouge. And I'm honored to have Speaker of the House Taylor Barra with me. Taylor, first of all, good morning, sir. Good morning, Moon. Happy to be here. Man, I, I appreciate you coming to be a part of it. And, and he I, even came in studio. I appreciate that. And, and I, I get to meet Matty. Hey, person. hey, hey how you like? Now, you met the boss because you saw how you had to switch mics well, we, and chairs. Well, she, for direct, Maddie. she directed me right <laughs> when I got in the door. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, he's not lying. It really happened like that. Uh, anyway, Taylor, great to see you. All right. Uh, you know, look, let's do this first of all. Uh, we, all, all we can go by is what we read. Me and you don't exactly talk every day, and I, I wish we could talk some, but I know we, we can't. But I can only go by what I read in the paper and what people are saying. Uh, I know you talk with the governor. Uh, I know he's talking with Alario, who is the Senate president. Uh, we're having a special session. Uh, is there been an agreement on anything at all about what may happen, a few things or something you can or cannot talk about at this time? Yeah, and, you know, I, 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 I've – caution folks as we continue to talk about this over the last several months with members and and everyone that you know the, the word deal gets thrown out it does, often. it does it does and and i said you know I, I i i i stay away from that word because i'm not sure a deal describes what we what we've been what we've been um negotiating and i think i think a lot of it moon is um from from the republican standpoint and i think i speak for for republicans both in the house and in the senate for the most part and that is that you know, in solving this cliff, in what creates the cliff, and even in solving the cliff, there's two sides to this ledger, and and it's an attempt we have made over the years to talk about the the, the expenditures of the state along with the revenue of the sure, state, sure. and it's going to be the blending of those things that eventually solve this cliff. If we get part of the way there, or, or all the way there during this special session, I think there's. I think I recognize the benefit of the last two years of seven sessions or six sessions, however many I lost count, um, that, that, you know, members are clearly understanding, you know, the different revenue buckets. If you're not part of the Ways and Means Committee, that's not something you hear a lot about. And if you don't do that in your daily job, you don't hear a lot about it. So for, for where we arrive today is people a lot more um, aware of what the buckets do, what generates it, how we lose revenue if, if certain things happen. So, I think I think where we are is at a, a a better informed place to talk about both sides of of the ledger. Um, you know, one side wants to talk more about cuts, the other side wants to talk more about revenue. I think the blend in the middle is where we where we find where we find some common ground. You know, that being said, I think what we've talked about kind of agreement in principle is that we know the things that are pretty much off the table. I shared that with the governor over a month ago um in spending the fall and talking to members of the things that we knew were options, and then when he made his recommendations back in December, you know there were two of them right off the top that I knew were gonna were gonna struggle. And and you know the 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 any arrangement that you make to the personal income tax brackets have been changed and and direction changed as a result of sure. of the federal government's action with tax reform. Um, so so you know when you take some things off the table and you see what the what the what the remaining options are. We began talking options and where we would like to blend if we offer support to some of those renewal options, because none of these are new tax proposals. Sure. They are renewals or replacements um, that we would want some some spending and budgetary reform ideas exchanged. In fact, you know, tie them together as we as we try and pass these revenue measures. And in all fairness to 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 both sides, I mean, this is. This is a you know a, a give and take. I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to raise every dollar of the revenue, in my opinion. But the parts that we can replace, I think it's important that we put. Um, I've spent a, you know a year working on expenditure cap, and you talk about my good former colleague Brett Guyman, mm-hmm. who uh, he and I talked about expenditure cap and expenditure limit for a number of years. Um, that that as you move forward and you create these buckets of revenue. That you have a reasonable expenditure limit to to, to watch over that, and that you're not, um, you know, uh, f- working with an expenditure limit that's so high in the sky you never come close to. Yeah, it. one of the things that I'm, uh, I guess I get disappointed a bit more with the press and the left is because they keep talking about how uh, revenue hadn't gone up, but it's going tremendous. It's going up tremendously. I mean, it's going up on the general side. It's going up on the federal side. It's going up everywhere you look at it. We have more money in the budget. We have a lot more. You got it. 
We had over $2 billion passed in taxes. I know some were temporary, but some were permanent. That's correct. And uh, that's my disappointment because they keep trying to act, tell people that it's like we didn't pass any taxes. We had Republicans vote for taxes. And that, that's I guess that's my biggest disappointment, which is not with you as some of the people in the body, but it's just that they can use the narrative that or even make the claim, you know, the governor's I think he's got in trouble by saying we cut six hundred million. Well then he comes back and says he's gonna have he's gonna have uh some numbers. Already got them. Well it took a week to get them. Then it came out it was six seventy two. The last time we reported and that's nine hundred and eighty one million he cut. Now you know uh, I think Sharon you had sent it to you had made a good point that a cut would mean to me, I'm gonna go simple, okay? I'm I'm right. I'm closer to Balkanville than anything else. Right. Ten is a number. Eleven's higher and nine's below. Correct. So if it goes from 10 to 11, that's an increase. Correct. And I'm serious. You can add all the zeros you want, but it's the same concept. So my disappointment is, I mean, the number-wise, you would admit, I've had some of your, your colleagues admit, some of the people, very important players, including Brett, but some of the other ones that actually vote. Uh, that's not a cut on him, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the fact of the matter is we've got more money in the budget, and it's not by a few hundred thousand. It's, a, it's, it's, it's in the billions. I mean, it's, it's more money. That is correct, and 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 again, I'll I'll, I'll mention that that expenditure limit, and it's a it's a very technical explanation, but but w- one of the things that that I think we we have experienced, and and keep in mind when we arrived in 2016, governor elected, our our new body took took office in 2016, the shortfall then was two billion dollars. Well, let me stop. Can I stop right there? I don't believe that number. Now, now let me tell you my well, my reason about it. It was 800 and something million during the election. It jumped to 1.2, then to 1.4, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, it's $2 billion. And I don't know how they did that that quick. And that's why I questioned that number. Now, you said it. I'm just asking you about that right. number. I questioned the $2 billion. Well, and let me, let me, let me, and it, it brings me back to the point that okay. we're talking okay. about yes, this sir. year. If, if, you, if you go back just one year, if you remember, um, in last year's session, the big debate from the House Republicans was um, basically hold back $200 million. Use, I remember that. Use 98% of sure. what the RAC estimates. If the estimate is wrong, we have a cushion to go back and forth with. I remember the debate. It is the expenditure limit. Just to pick a state as an example, Mississippi uses that exact limit. Ninety-eight percent of their revenue estimate is what they budget for. That that that's smart, that battle, by the way. That's smart it, budget. It left the house. It you know it it, it got uh, it got massacred after it left the house. But um, from a from a you know not not intending to be a told you so moment, but you fast forward till now, you have the July one budget starts. You you know you have some revenue adjustments to do during any fiscal year, which is what ordinarily happens. And then you have what, what we call the continuation budget, meaning what do you need from basically mid-year to June sure. to completely fund that budget if some of the revenue buckets change. We call it the continuation budget. Withholding back that $200 million would have corrected the error that we're facing today by the governor not being able to fund his continuation budget. That's, you know, 280 upwards of $300 million. Good point. I remember the day. That wouldn't be part of the discussion had we been able to hold that back last year. For for the various political reasons, that didn't work. Back to my point this time is when you're, when we left the session in June, the shortage was $1.4 billion. When you don't fund continuation, take $300 million off of that, you're down to $1.74 billion, which is what we agreed was truly what, what the delta was. You know, the feds make their change. You drop that to, to, to you know, $700 million, $800 million. You have a, an REC um, increase in December that drops at another $200 million. Those All things, prices are going to affect it, too. Uh, absolutely. I mean, there may be, over the next 12 months, some more REC adjustments that, that are made. Um, so, so to, to capture so it, it's so tough. Let me ask you a question. So you're saying, I'm just going by your numbers, we're five to $600 million away now? I, I, I mean, hard numbers. You're probably seven away. Okay, because, no, not because sure we've already that's recognized RAC for okay, 223. Okay. Yes, the the Fed estimate is a little bit of a an unsophisticated number because it's our Department of Revenue Absolutely. and our economists Absolutely. estimating Absolutely. what that will be. Yes, sir. Um, I think the number we're using is 280 million. So the Delta becomes a a a 700 million number that that we'll look at the revenue options that are there. And going back to your original question, that is the the options that we have been discussing for the last several weeks. Well, I, I, but I do want to go back on the two billion. Do you really think it was two billion? It, I don't. It, I don't. And I'm telling you, my reasoning is maybe and not your reasoning. Correct. We talked about look at the election. We're gonna have eight hundred million dollars. It's in the papers. They can go read it. Then it was one point two, one point four, and it jumps up to two billion. As soon as the special session starts, and I thought, how do they keep up in the money like that? They may be saying, okay, if we don't have this, then we can't do this, and we can't get federal money. I don't know how they came up with that number. I always thought that number was bogus. 
Yeah, and, I may and, be wrong, Taylor, but I'm just asking you. Yeah, and technically, the I mean, if you have a shortage, or the way we de- we define the shortage technically is the difference between the two REC estimates. So, so what the REC estimate in revenue available is, plus what you're saying your expenditure total is. But here's the danger: if you if you operating under standstill budget, you know what that expenditure total is. Sure. Once you petition your 20 departments and ask them to turn in their budgets for next year and they add four or five, six hundred million worth of wishes to that list, then you create. Then you go to the two billion. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? But to me, Correct. that's a that's a created six hundred exactly. or seven hundred million exactly. dollar cliff going exactly. back down to what I said. I didn't believe the two <laughs> billion was budget. Listening to you, I was yeah. right. Correct. Doing it the way they did it, I see how they claim it, though. Well, and here, here's the thing. When that turns into an appropriation discussion during the session and some of that gets funded, thus you're creating a continuation budget Absolutely. that you're hoping those RIC estimates are right. Yeah, and if you don't have the money, now you're talking about taxes. That's correct. Which we're talking about now. When we get back, a little bit about the plan y'all had last year and how that would have affected maybe this coming year. Anyway, Definitely. speaking of House, Taylor Barra is in the House, folks. We're visiting with him, 844-766-6607. Hickson has it online. Uh, you want me to sing? That's what you're pointing for me to sing? No, I'm pointing Maddie, for me to am talk. I good, Maddie, am I a good singer? Huh? <laughs> the look on her face says it all. <laughs> you should have videoed that. <laughs> anyway, welcome back, Moongraphon Show. Uh, speaking of House Taylor Barrow, we don't get to visit with the speaker much, and I'm, I'm, I'm honored that he came by to visit with us. And uh, thank you once again for coming by. I know we we jumped the gears with you, but that's a, that's a big deal. We did want to see with the president. You, Absolutely. I actually saw you turn around and watch the president. Absolutely. So you wanted to know as well. Uh Last uh, one of the one of my pet peeves, and it's not with y'all as much as it is the press that continue to say the the Republicans and they're talking about y'all, Taylor. Let's be, the, the Republicans in the House. There's a few in the Senate that are strong, but not as many. But in the House, y'all have got a good group. Y'all have got some people in that have fought the good fight. So they're really targeting you and Cameron Henry and Lance Harris and whoever else is in the way. Uh, but y'all did have a plan last year. And what, what what blew my mind is Republicans don't have a plan. Repu- no, y'all didn't have a plan there we agreed to, but y'all had a plan that I think would have affected the budget this year. Talk a little bit about what y'all tried to do last year that you think would have helped you this year as, as this thing has unfolded. Sure, and 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 I would tell you going back to last year, the frustration I think with a lot of a lot of Republican members is the ability um for for forecasting for for lack of a, a better description of it the revenue estimating conference created in the constitution years ago to do a, a an economist job if you will we have two two economists that that assist with with Dr. Richardson from LSU as well on trying for the current year and for a 5 year plan to estimate what revenues are out there watching all prices all the buckets of revenue those kinds of things Difficult, difficult job. I mean, I'm one of the four members that sit on the REC. It is not necessarily science. I mean, you got to wait for the market to respond. You got lots of things to consider. That being said, when we approach the budget and we're looking at what the REC estimates that we will have in revenue for the next fiscal year, it for for <laughs> for a number of times over the last ten or fifteen years, that number gets adjusted. I hate to but say, it's, and I hate about to three hundred million dollars off. Off, yeah. And I hate to say it's wrong. It's just market changes quickly. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not. Listen, you're not me. You know, you, and that's a good thing, by the way. But, but you just being honest about it's been off. Correct. Okay. Correct. Whether it was intentionally or not, you're Correct. basically saying it's not. You're saying, Moon, I sit there. It's, it's not a science. You got a little guessing and estimating that's going on. Absolutely. Okay, I'm with you. But Absolutely. it's been off consistently. Correct. For about. What, the last eight to ten uh, years? Several times since I've served, actually. Okay. I mean, we've adjusted. I mean, even within a year, we adjust the forecast. So Brandon, Brandon, Brandon we're going to tar and feather him when he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Go so ahead. so you, 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 you approach the, the session with, if you, if you, if you expend or try and appropriate 100% of that, that estimate, there's a chance that you'll have a mid-year adjustment that you need to do. Um, and, and that was the frustration that had been set in for the last seven or eight years, is making sizable mid-year adjustments because we appropriate 100% of the estimate. So, you know, as we as we talked in the off season before last session, it was let's come up with a formula that makes sense. You know, 90 percent is probably too deep. Ninety five, ninety eight, whatever the number is. Ninety eight million worked out to be about ninety eight percent worked out to be about two hundred million dollars that we were going to suggest that we hold back. Budget, now, now I'm taking budget. it. You, uh, just back up a second. I'm taking it because if you look at 10 years, <laughs> oh, Correct. 10, 300 Correct. million off and you adjusted 200 million. That number closes the gap Absolutely. on which you might have to help the budget. Absolutely. Correct? Am I correct and, about uh, that? Correct. Okay. That is correct. And what, what, what you, what, what we knew going in is if we know we're going to spend 98%, 
you would be doing what you would have to do in December. So if you don't give it, you? if you don't give a department what they're asking for July one, the difference is if you give it to them, you're probably having to take it away in December. And and that's what I think the body and and lots of members were trying to avoid that process repeating itself. You know, independent from us making that suggestion, um, you know, when the administration came out with with what they were going to uh, push during the session. If you remember the commercial activity tax, which got a great deal of press, a little, a Not little, good. a little, a little pull out the hat surprise just sure. before the session started, but um, it it went nowhere quickly, and its effect on on businesses and those types of things. So, you know, to, for the press to characterize that as the Republicans not having a plan, it was yeah, the plan is let's spend ninety eight percent of the okay, of the but, revenue. But was part of the plan also, if I recall. Was let's do a standstill budget correct. with with the exception we're going to do the mandated stuff and I think it was sixty eighty million that's correct that we were going to add that do a standstill budget and you would have cut this quote one billion dollar deficit probably in half by now am I correct by correct. saying that well you 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 would not have funded not have funded you wouldn't it have in, funded in, the in whole budget year. and then the continuation that I just talked about earlier the continuation budget that we're looking at today to fund until June thirtieth. Would have been certainly less two hundred million, if not more, depending on the other adjustments you made. So you, you'd be you, five you, or six hundred million dollars right now, not a billion. Correct, and and I mean those when you try and define the cliff for folks and what a fiscal yes, cliff sir. is worth a billion or a billion four at the time you're discussing it, it's all of those components because even within the twelve month budget cycle, you're going to make some revenue adjustments. Absolutely, I understand. And we were saying let's allow the wiggle room for that. To and happen. I thought yeah, that was the plan though. The, the 98% or 98.5, whatever it was. Correct. Number two was a standstill budget with making sure the mandates were going to be funded. That sounds like a plan to me. That and correct. had that been done, would we be at a five to $700 million hole That's right now? Certainly. certainly. Okay, so then if you was, I'm just throwing this at you. So if you were to come back this year and say, you know what, we got this penny. Let's knock it down to a half cent, which would create about a half a billion, $600 a, a, a half a penny is about four hundred forty million estimated. Okay, yeah. okay, so that that you could drop the penny Absolutely. down and then have most of that covered. Absolutely, and, you would and, be in a range right now without even tripping out. Yeah, and in hindsight, that's that's you know where where we are. But it was a plan, you, wasn't it? Exactly, it was a exactly. plan. Yeah. You, you don't have the money to fund the continuation. The money the you are going to raise is going to be to close the gap. But yeah, yes, that that was. Beginning to work in the right direction. No, but you no had a plan, and had that plan been in place, your what you're dealing with now, when you're knowing this penny's coming off, would be a little bit easier to play with. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think so. absolutely. But aren't you amazing? Did you read anywhere in the paper where y'all had a plan at all? No, absolutely. Not. <laughs> and I, it was that's what <laughs> I was frustrated for y'all because it seems like the pro Edwards press, and there's a bunch of it out there. They just go on with his side. They never actually saying, "Hold up, governor." You know, they they're trying to meet you halfway. You talked yeah. about it earlier. We visit with the governor. I'm not talking about deal. And you're visiting with uh, Larry, to speak, uh, the president, and you're trying to put together some. And you say, "We can't do it all on the revenue side. We can't do it all on the cut side. Something in the middle." Seemed like to me, y'all just gave something in the middle. Well, and 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 beginning this this deliberation, you know, with 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 the reform ideas that were not part of the commission's report as it relates to spending and budget reform. They did a pretty thorough job on the revenue recommendations that they made. Yeah. What 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 I challenged was can we can we talk about some of the reforms that we think are important? You know, did they not tackle adjusting. that at all on the other side? You know, I didn't. From, if it was if it, it was done, it was it was not done with a lot of zeros behind it. How about correct. that? In, in the legislation that we passed that that created the commission, the title of it was budget spending and and tax policy um, review. So, I mean, all three of the above were, were part of the agenda. Of course, the focus was on revenue um, at the time. Yes, sir. And, and, and valid recommendations when you sit down and look at all 13 buckets of revenue that come mm-hmm. into the state. You know, when, when you can talk local government and sales tax and all of the things are on the table, when you just start talking sales tax and personal income tax, that's not comprehensive tax reform. So, no. you know, I challenge that part, but I also challenge the fact that there whether it was lack of time and, and, I mean, they met for a long time and did great work, but spending budget ideas of budgeting 98% or yeah. adjusting the, the spending cap, those kinds of things were not you part know, of their report. It always bothers me when I hear people talk about tax swaps and tax neutrality. On Newton, there's no such thing in my book. It's no way. I go back to Stelly. They keep bringing back that was the best thing they ever did. That's, what's hurt, that, that's what hurt us, and it really didn't because they never, they never, Taylor, you've been there a while, I, 
and you might can ex- explain we don't have enough time of all the great things that have been done in the last 10 or 20 years of changing the way we do business. I don't see it. I don't see the big changes because like the government says, we're going to cut 600 million. You know yourself, if they cut 200 million, people nut up. How can you right. cut 600 million? Nobody said a word. Right. Nobody cried. Nobody bickered. Nobody fussed. And tops were still fully funded. And tops were still fully funded. But we cut six hundred million dollars. That that was a pet peeve I had too. Taylor Barra, of course, speaking of house, when we get back, we'll talk to him a little about on tops. People have been asking me about the tops program. And uh I want I want to mention that it's a billion dollars, but when the governor did his call, he said one point four billion. Another almost half billion dollars. Why don't you talk a little bit where that comes from? All right, speaking mm-hmm. of house, Taylor Barra when we get back. Welcome back to the Major Five Show. You weren't gonna talk about the speaker, were you? <laughs> speaker, <laughs> yes. Hey, Speaker, I got a... Uh, me and Maddie, where did we go eat the other day? Shucks. We went to Shucks. Was it good? Yeah. You like the Shucks, don't you? Yeah. She does. Everybody loves Maddie. They don't love me. They throw me to the side. Like I need to have Maddie come to the chamber when we're in session. I could use Maddie a few days. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie, Maddie would defend her for you. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, but uh, I, was telling, I was telling the Speaker about the time, and Maddie would listen to my program, and she's at home and stuff, and... Jindal was in office, and uh, hold on, baby, and and and, and I, I I was not as friendly to Jindal as I probably people would have liked, but I was right about him. But anyway, she gets on the program, and I let her say, "Okay, Maddie, just say welcome back to the program." You better have a mic off. It's off. Okay, and then she goes, <laughs> yeah, she off. goes, she goes, "Welcome back to the Moon Graffon Show, and let me tell you about Bobby Jindal." And I went, "Oh Ooh. my God!" I, I tell you what, my shoe wasn't big enough for me to squeeze in, but I almost squeezed in, and I had people say, "Boo!" What are you telling that kid? I don't tell her anything. She she's just very observant. She listens to that little headset. You think she's listening to the music? And my bride will walk by and go, "Maddie, what you listening to?" Listening to my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Good listener. That's right. <laughs> Taylor Byra speaking. I tell first of all, thank you for coming by. Absolutely. Uh, wish you the best of luck in the session. Uh, a, a couple of things real quick. You know, you mentioned a billion dollars. I've read about the billion dollars. But when the governor did a call, the headline was was with one point four billion. And and, and you got to help the audience exp- explain. It's a billion dollars. Is that the number you're giving me? The the, the difference in the revenue is about a billion dollars. A billion dollars. Okay. Correct. Where's the one point four billion come from? I, and I, and people need to know how we get to that number. Just like now, you explained it earlier, and I understood it when you said how we got to two billion. Correct. Because I even stopped you and said, "Hold up, explain it to me." You did, but explain why it's one point four billion to him. But it's not one four point four billion to you. But the press will put some of the stuff in the paper without really asking a question. And and you know that billion that we talked about earlier is the difference between the two revenue estimates from from last year to this year mm-hmm. that are going to be with the with the roll off of the taxes. We'll be missing about a billion dollars in revenue. That explains the billion. The other four hundred million that gets referenced is what we we call, and it's you know legislative term, but the continuation budget, meaning what will it take to operate the state till June thirtieth of this year. Now, all of that was put in the budget last July 1. Of course, there are revenue estimate changes that happen during that year. That $400 million still sits up, sits there um, waiting to be funded. That includes a, a 13th payment that we, we talk about. Uh, it's a Medicaid vendor payment that keeps getting shifted to another year. In some year, if we ever can afford to make 13 payments, we will. We make 12. But there's something Jindal did years ago, and it continues to follow. It's worth about $150 million. I think there will come a day where that can certainly be be paid in the current year and be done with it to where you're not moving it from year to year. Yeah, they, they, they move some stuff. But, but the the other, governor, this governor's moved some stuff, too, with Medicaid and some stuff like that, delayed correct. payments as well. The other $300 million are are actually things that we debated last session to not put in this July 1 budget. Um, you know, that, that, that was on the department wish list that we knew we probably were not going to be able to fund. So going back to your, your example of... You know, if you had held back two hundred million, you would have certainly taken care of this need to fund a continuation. Yes, sir. But from the members' perspective, when we're hitting the the floor next Monday, our goal is replacing or looking for ways to replace the billion dollars that's short in revenue. Not the one point four billion. Is because the one? The, would you say the one point four billion? I mean, the, the extra four hundred million dollars to our audience is more of wants and desires That's to correct. have, That's basically, versus what you, quote, have to have. That is correct. With so, the so that's really not 1.4 billion. Yeah, I mean, there are some mandated things in there, whatever the increase is in the MFP, similar to last year, 60 or $80 million. Um, we are required to calculate inflation. That's built in there, the, the 13th Medicaid payment that I mentioned to you. 
So there's a lot of components in that continuation budget. We never have appropriated for inflation. I mean, there's lots of that number that, that will not be able to be funded, and the departments will make those adjustments or not get their wish list. That, that, that's the reality. Uh, but but when you're when you're looking for a billion, it's a little stretch to ask for looking for one point four. No, that but when, that that's what bothered me. That's why I asked you the early part of the program. Was it a two billion? Because you came correct. out of your mouth a two billion that's deficit, correct. and I said, oh, whoa, whoa, I want you to do it. And then you explained it, and that's you're correct. explaining more of a want desire than it really is a need. And I I, I think the people in Louisiana, we don't mind funding needs. I mean, I know there's that's needs, correct. and I mean we're not being silly here. I know we need to pay taxes. I'm not being silly on that, but Funding needs and funding wants and desires and creating new programs, I just don't think that's what the, the Louisiana people need to be, be, be here. And, and, I mean, there are there are natural increases in cost as it relates to, to benefits and those kinds of things. But, but Some but the, of that can be absorbed. I mean, I'm, I'm operating the – I'm kind of the CEO of the House of Representatives, and I deal with that budget. There are things that we have to absorb. But the thing know? about it is you're in the real world, too, because you're in the banking business. Me and I, I run my own business. Very small, but I run my own right. business. I've, I've got to absorb some things, too. I mean, I had to absorb the outrageous health care costs because Correct. of the Obama administration. Correct. I mean, I had to absorb it whether I wanted it to or not. I didn't want I wish I wish I was only paying three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars a month like some people, not two thousand a month, which, by the way, I got a real break on. That. It would have been forty one hundred. You know, I mean, you we got that. And that's what worries me a little bit with state government sometime. I mean, uh, I mean, I know we got we, we got record revenue coming in when you really think about it. They keep going back to two thousand eight. Because that's the highest money we ever came after Katrina and Rita. But that stuff went away. If you go back to 2004 before they came there, we got a lot more money in the budget. And, and the federal tax change that kicks in um, next year, uh, you'll see that you'll see that okay. as well. Uh, let me. I'm going to throw this at you. And this, this may be something you want to talk about. Or you don't feel comfortable. And uh, it's nothing to do with your family. Gas tax. They pushed it last year. I know Donald Trump. I, I, I'm reading an article. Trump for a 25 cent gas increase. They may be throwing that number out there hoping to get 10 whatever it is, right. uh, where are we at on that? My, my, own, my own take is that we haven't spent the money on roads like we could have through the years, and you weren't there. Correct. Just to be blunt with you, we weren't there. And I know people are looking at this, we need to do <laughs> something with infrastructure, and our roads are bad. But, you know, Texas got 20 cents, and, now, and Mississippi got 18 point something, and Arkansas has 20, 21 cents, and they've been fixing our roads. Before we do that, can we go back and see where all this money's going to? Have we overemployed the DOTD? Is that have we have we got too many people that got gigantic salaries that maybe didn't deserve? What happened? Now I'm not saying you know this, but I'm saying before we go with a gas tax, can we at least get a take on what we did with the money all these years instead of just telling the people, well, you know, the dollar don't go as far as it used to. Well, it did in Texas. <clears throat> you know, so where, what are we looking at on this, if you had to bet? And, and you know, from a from a structure um, as it relates to the Transportation Trust Fund, which was created by the Constitution sure, 25 sure. years ago, whenever that was. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so you you have the Transportation Trust Fund, all of the 20 cents, one 16 cent assessment and one four cent assessment sure. goes into the Transportation Trust Fund. When that was created, the Department of Transportation was a state general fund department. They were getting part of their funding from state general fund. The Transportation Trust Fund, as it was passed by the people, I think people assumed it was going to be for asphalt and concrete. That's what I would assume, Correct. too. Over the years, and, and I'd have to go back and see when that when the, the, the state general fund portion of the DOT budget dwindled to a point where the TTF was generating five $600 million, and the decision was made that the department would be, would be run on the proceeds of the TTF. I can't call it a mistake. I, I, I think the state was probably in a different position, flush with cash, when that decision was sure, made. Sure. So when you when you take the proceeds from that twenty cents and fast forward at twenty five years, its buying power is less, no doubt. But you also have to fund staff, salaries, benefits, and all those things out of the TTF. I got a My, feeling that's where a lot of the money's going. I, exactly. I just, and I'm not by the way, not cutting <laughs> anybody. I got a feeling it's going. So I can understand them wanting right. more revenue in that aspect. But, boy, let me tell you something. You know, they, they recognize about $300 million in surplus over the uh, end, of, end of this last year and next year, whatever it was. That's money you can use the roads. Correct. And that's, Correct. that's kind of the money I think they ought to Correct. look at. And, and, and you know, so when you, when you get to the point of the discussion, the discussion last year on a possibility of a, of a gas tax is the fear is if you put it in the old model TTF, then you just feed the same animal again. That that you that know, is the you fear know. for people. So, I agree. so you would almost have to, you know, re either go back to the voters and redesign the TTF, 
um, if you're going to do gas tax. And then you have a lot of discussion, is gas tax really the funding mechanism for the future? As you have automobiles probably, you know, getting away from maybe gas primarily. That's probably a 15, 20 year conversion curve. But Texas 2014 did a sales tax carve off to let their gas there. Uh, and then, and if, if, if I read it correctly, they spun it outside of their TTF. They have one as well, mm-hmm. specifically for asphalt, concrete, construction type projects. I just think if, if, if people can go back and just look at the time program, we never did fix all those roads. That's correct. And we don't maintain that at all. That's my last example of this is what you've done for me lately correct. and why I have a problem with it. Yeah, I don't have a problem with my money going to roads, Taylor. I, I, uh, but I do have a problem going back when I look at the past, and I think we need to be up front with what went on Absolutely. so we can now go to the future. That that 20 cents that twenty cents needs to be readdressed, but it needs to be redirected as yeah, well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Speaking of ours, Taylor Bauer, best of luck in a special session. Hope we'll hear from you maybe in a week or two. I appreciate you. Thank you very God much. God bless you. Thank you. All right, folks, quick break. See you back on Monday. Day of a special session. God bless.